Welcome to Planet Africa Television. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. On today's program, we're featuring Nice Nilante, a Maasai woman who showed great courage by running away from home at the age of eight to avoid female genital mutilation. She now continues to educate the community about stopping this harmful practice. We also speak with Anne-Marie Kamanye, the executive director of AMREF Health Canada, about their role in eradicating female genital mutilation in Africa. My name is Nais Nailanti Lenyete, and I was born in Kimana. I lost my parents, both of them, in 1997 and 1998. So when I was eight years old, uh, you know that's the age when they organize circumcision for girls. So I knew like I'm, I'm young, so I can stand all this. And then again, I was in a boarding school, so I was interacting with people from different communities. So I really knew that it's something that is not a must. So at 4 a.m., we woke up and we escaped. We walked actually for almost 20 kilometers, and we were beaten. We were beaten and we were told that next time don't do something stupid like that. So in December he came again. So in the morning again I escaped. I went to my grandfather's home and I told him, my grandfather, I've been seeing some of my girlfriends dying when they are bleeding, when they are being circumcised. And then again I was seeing that once they are circumcised, you know it's a stretch from girlhood to womanhood. So I knew that once this is done to me, that's the end of my education. I was telling my grandfather that I really, I want to go to school, that's all I want. And I don't want to be circumcised, you know, so later on he recognized my determination and said that just leave her alone, and that's how I, I escaped. So back in 2008, I was chosen by my village elders to undergo a training, which was organized by AMREF, and by that time, I was the only girl who has gone to school in that community. We were told that, when you're going back to your community, make sure what you got here, you'll take it back. So I say that uh, these men, we call them Morans. Morans are men who are mid-20s, uh, mid-30s. So these are men who are uh, at most at a risk. And then again, in terms of circumcision, they are the future husbands of these young girls. So the first time I went to them, they rejected me. But I still had something in my mind that I still want to help these other girls and I'm not going to give up, I'll give it a try. Even if it's after 10 years, maybe one day it's, it's going to bear fruit. After some time, they allowed me. So I went, I started having forums with them, uh, talking about HIV and AIDS. So it was very hard for you to start talking with them. But later on, after interacting with them, I saw that they are becoming open. Now we had to go into other deeper issues. Without this old chain or without these different groups, you cannot, I mean, you cannot end uh, circumcision. Yeah, because you need everyone. You need the parents, uh, the mother and the father to understand why, why, why are we not, or why are we not supposed to do this to our younger girls. I always believe that in this community, if you want to check, uh, if you want to make change, you really need patience, so you have to wait. You know, these are people who are by change, it's going to take a lot of time. You can just change people in one day or two days. And it's, sometimes it's good to have dreams, but, and I always believe that if, if you believe in something, you one day you'll make it. Why I decided to run at the age of eight is after seeing a series of events in my community because one is that when you are young, you have to go and attend ceremonies and see other girls when they are undergoing circumcision. They want to prepare you. They want you to see the way other girls are not crying, the way they are strong, because you see again, you are not allowed to cry. It means that there is no man from that community who is going to marry you. Or even uh, live alone crying, even moving your body or eyes, you are not allowed to do that. So after seeing that, uh, I knew that I will not be able to, I was only eight, uh, I, I, I knew that definitely I will cry. Not only that, after the loss of my parents, uh, I had to go to a boarding school because I was living with my grandfather. And in the boarding school, I used to interact with girls from different communities. So when they know you are from my community, the Maasai community, you see girls bath in big bathrooms 
together like seven or ten girls. So if you're from my community, they want to come and look at you. Say, oh, this is how a circumcised girl look like. And they laugh at you. That could traumatize a lot of girls that even many of them dropped. Because for them, it's not done in their communities. And then again, we lost a girl out of circumcision in my community, whereby again the community could not agree it's because of circumcision. It's, they are saying that is a caste family. Uh, so after seeing all that, I knew that I want to go back to school and the only way I'll be able to go back to school is when I don't agree to undergo the cut because once I agree, uh, I'm considered a woman in the community. So the next thing, even if I'm 10 or 8 or 11 years, I have to get married and drop out of school. Through her own efforts and with the support of AMREF Health Africa, Nice began educating her community with new messages about sexual reproductive health and rights. Over time, she has been able to reach many women, girls and morons with her conviction to eliminate the traditional practice of female genital mutilation. Girls who've had FGM or FGC, uh, the FGC or FGM procedure, often don't end up going to school. So after the cut, you're now considered a woman and you can get married. And this procedure happens to quite um, a number of young girls. There's 44 million girls under the age of 14 that have had the procedure done. So if you can imagine that you can get married at the age of 14 or 15, the chances of you going to school are very minimal. Uh, secondly, uh, there's health concerns around it. So it's not a procedure that's done under um, sterile uh, circumstances. So girls can get sick, there's bleeding, there's infection that can happen on a girl that has undergone this procedure. I would say another third area is if you make it through all of those things and now you're pregnant, um, giving birth can become very complicated having had this procedure done. So there's different ways that it affects uh, young women, it's self-esteem issues, it's um, just not feeling valued, it's, it's a lot of different ways that it can affect a young woman that undergoes it dangers of female genital mutilation are, 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 are many. One is that uh, you are called a woman. So why they do circumcision, it's a stage from girlhood to womanhood. So it means that even if you are 10 years old, you are considered a woman. So you are ready for sex, you are ready for marriage. Uh, where we are coming from, it's that once you are married, the only thing is that you have to give birth. You are even given that advice by your parents on that day when they have uh, your marriage ceremony. So uh, one of the things is that girls are not becoming uh, women of their dreams. They are not getting the chance to go back to school. And then the other thing, we have so many complications health-wise. Uh, we have prolonged labor. If you look at women from my community, once they give birth, uh, they stay at home for three months or even more. So meaning uh, they're, not, uh, they're not getting the energy or they are not healing faster compared to women from other communities. These women and girls uh, are not able to go back to school, meaning they are not empowered. They are facing all forms of gender-based violence because they cannot put something on table. It means again that their men are beating them each and every time. Planet Africa Television will be right back. Welcome back. Nice Delante is a true agent of change and a proof that one woman's courage can lead to the liberation of many. Nice Nilante grew up in the remote village of Kimana, nestled in the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro in Kenya. After her parents both died within a year of each other in 1998, Nice was sent to live with her uncle. At the age of eight, she narrowly avoided being circumcised by running away from home multiple times. I was talking to women, I was talking to girls, I was talking to circumcisers and boys in my community. So the hardest part was talking to elders uh, or cultural elders who are decision makers in my community or even the younger men. Because when the younger men are saying, you are taking our wives away from us, if they are not circumcised, who is going to marry them? So it was very important to bring them on board and understand why are we saying we need to invest in our girls' education and leave the practice and give girls a surety that we are going to marry you, but even at the right time without being circumcised and all that. So I think it was about giving information to each group, either the young and the old women and uh, men. Because again, men in my community are people we cannot assume because they are powerful. They decide. Women are not allowed to decide. So it was important to put them on board. 
Nice Delante stood up for herself in a traditional patriarchal community, challenging the attitudes of her male-dominated tribe in her quest to end a harmful traditional practice of FGM. In 2016, Nice was selected to participate in Mandela Fellowship for Young Leaders, hosted by President Barack Obama in Washington. The Mandela Washington Fellowship is a flagship program for uh, President Obama whereby he brings uh, young African leaders from all over Africa who, uh, like for me, I was under the civic leadership uh, track. We were able to see how the private and public sectors are working in the U.S. We were able to network with uh, different people. But morally, I think, uh, above all, it was meeting the president himself. And actually, in his speech, he was able to talk about female genital mutilation and early marriages, saying that um, uh, these are old practices that should stop. So uh, it, it was good. He's a cool, amazing man. So it was good to be there and meet him. And uh, knowing that we are not alone, we have people outside there who are thinking about the problems that we are undergoing in Africa. Planet Africa Television will be right back. Welcome back. AMREF Health Africa has worked with Nice Nilante to eradicate female genital mutilation. Their work has enabled young women to celebrate an alternative rites of passage, which does not include female genital mutilation. I met Nice maybe four years ago in Tanzania, um, but she's actually a Maasai woman from Kenya, and she's quite young, she's 25 but has done some incredible work in her community. And the work that we do with NICE centers around um, ending what we call Stop the Cut, which looks at ending FGM, or how some people refer to it as FGC, so female genital mutilation or female genital cutting. And she's a young lady who, at the age of eight, ran away from home so that she wouldn't have to undergo the procedure. And AMREF met her later in her life, and she's now a project manager that works within the communities we work in to um, actually stop the cut. AMREF Health Africa has a long history of working with the Maasai, from delivering health services to helping drill water wells. AMREF Health Africa has earned the Maasai community's trust and respect. AMREF has worked with NICE and the Maasai community in changing traditional attitudes towards female genital mutilation. I tried uh, helping uh, seven girls the first time running away from circumcision. Uh, and I used to talk to them, advise them, telling them the importance of going to school because at that time I was the only girl in my community who has gone to school. So I was, again, not feeling well when, you know, I'm with girls from other tribes, but my tribe is not there. The second time was 24 girls, but I was not able to make the, all of them run away. Uh, seven of them were not lucky, they got circumcised. So I said, uh, I started now s sitting down and saying, we cannot be fighting with the community the, every time. We cannot be running away every time. We need to find a solution. Because one, we have girls with disabilities who cannot even see or even cannot even walk, where will they run if every time we are helping our girls to, to run away? So I said we need to find a solution whereby we sit down with the community and talk and agree what is the best way for our girls. Because, And that is how we came up with alternative rites of passage because we are saying it's not everything in our culture that we are doing is bad. In collaboration with AMREF, we have done it's around over 10,000 girls have graduated from the ceremony that we call Alternative Rites of Passage. And this ceremony, if I can speak to it briefly, is around the idea that there's many cultural practices within female gender mutilation that you can continue to do. So you can continue the dancing and the singing and the, the ceremony. But what we're asking communities is to stop the cut. We are like the pride of Africa. We still have the good part of our culture that we still want to retain. So in the whole process of female circumcision, we looked at it and we said, what is not OK is just the cut. Any other ritual, it's fine. People wearing our traditional clothes, dancing, old men taking the traditional beer, blessing with uh, girls again, whereby this time they don't bless them to go and give birth, to go and take care of their husbands and all that. Uh, now they are blessing them with books and pens to be teachers, doctors, or any kind of you know women they want to be after their studies. But it was not easy again because one year you know a woman in my community is not allowed to talk in front of men or address a meeting 
of men. It was not allowed. So it took me one and a half years just to convince the younger men be before I started convincing uh, the older men. Planet Africa Television will be right back. Welcome back. Nice Delante's efforts have saved thousands of girls from female genital mutilation. Even though she was strongly opposed initially, she is now recognized and celebrated. The elders of the land awarded her a sierra, which means a black walking stick, which symbolizes leadership. Now the community are not seeing me as a bad example like before. Now I'm a role model to the girls and the whole community. So I think that was after they saw that enrollment of girls in schools is improving. Again, I'm involving them in, in our work. They all have information. And I think through my work, uh, they gave me the black walking stick that is called the Sierra that symbolizes leadership. So that is only given to men. And it's not just any man, it's a man who is a leader. So uh, that is good because it's a symbolic walking stick. So I use it in my meetings. Uh, when I don't agree with whatever they are saying, I just raise uh, the stick and um, I'm able to, co to take control of the meeting and all that. So it's good because I use it to command people sometimes when I disagree with them, but not in a bad way, in a good way. We brought NICE to Canada. It was a very lovely coincidence because it was the UN day to end um, FGM and we, she happened to be traveling uh, to our colleagues in Italy so we said can you please now extend her visit and let her come to Canada uh, to celebrate this day which was on February 6th. And her visit here was really important because I think often we don't get enough time or we don't get enough opportunities to hear directly from the community members, right? Um, to hear directly from people affected, to hear directly from people who are making the change within the communities. So having her here was really important on that day so she could be the voice of somebody who, first of all, ran away from FGM and never had the procedure done, but has a sister, an older sister, who's had the procedure done, and also has seen other girls have the procedure done, but has also seen many not have the procedure done and what it means for their future. And I think for me, it was really important to even hear her story firsthand, even though I work for AMREF, hearing it, her story firsthand again, and no matter how many times you hear it, it's very impactful. And you know that I expected that at least um, people within uh, that we went and visited, donors, um, we went, we had an event in Ottawa with MPs and other stakeholders. We had an event at Global Affairs Canada where she was able to speak about this issue. And I think she, she delivered the message well because she's a person that has gone through um, this whole process. I came to Canada uh, for different meetings. Uh, one, I came for the OCIC conference, which whereby I was one of the speakers. And I went to Ottawa, whereby uh, I met uh, Caesar Shivana. And uh, we had other two MPs. I think one was from the uh, leading party, and the other one was from uh, the opposition so it was really good to meet different people and get to see uh, you know what are their views about it because that day was very important for me because it was on Monday it was the uh, international day on uh, zero tolerance to FGM so the parliamentary secretary was one of the speakers and uh, her speech was was moving and that gave me hope and you know that is giving other girls and women hope that we have people from here who are feeling their problems, who are always ready to work with them and help them in different ways. And uh, I was able to meet different people, uh, but I think the weather, the cold is just too much. It's just too much for me, but uh, the good part is that people are warm at their heart, so I'm not thinking of the cold so much. Nilante has taken a message to stop female genital mutilation to many global platforms. She has spoken at Clinton Global Initiative and the TEDx talk in the Netherlands. We are proud people, proud of our traditions and our identity. 
Our culture have embraced a system that denies women basic human rights, right to control her body, right to education, right to choose whom to marry and when, and right to express opinion. Female genital cutting, although it's legal, is still common that is being done to young girls who are aged 12 years and above, are being cut, taken out of school, and married. Our women or our girls, they don't have to fight for their rights. It should be smooth that people should respect them and allow them and uh, understand that they have choices, they have rights for their own bodies, we don't have to decide for them. And uh, above all, it's all about investing in education because I think we cannot end these harmful practices if we are not taking our girls or our boys to school. So it's about taking them to school. But morally in future, I'm thinking of politics, uh, which is subject to confirmation up to now, that is in 2022. Because once you're in leadership, it means you have more power and more voice to reach more people. But my agenda will be the same, women and girls, and maybe resources to the marginalized communities, because where we are coming from are places whereby it's even hard for the government to get there. We don't have schools, we don't have good roads, we don't have hospitals. So I think when I'm there, I'll be able to make sure that we are also bringing the resources uh, to our villages the same way we are taking to or other places. I have uh, many women that I look up to, but I think the woman I admire more or I like when she speaks and uh, I just admire her passion to girls and children and education and all that, I think is Michelle Obama. So she is one of the women I look up to and I see she is a good example to the world, to other women and other girls. That's all for the program. I hope you were inspired by Nice Nelente, whose story is not just that of courage and heroism, but one that teaches us all to reach out and help others along the way when we've been freed from the shackles that hold us bound. If you'd like to know more about us, please visit our website at planetafricagroup.com. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I am Patricia Baby Mawa. See you next time. Kwaheri.